Oh my goodness, look what's just arrived. This is the Janome HD9. It's a semi-industrial straight stitch machine. I'm gonna take you through everything I've learned in the first three months of having the machine, whether I think you need one or if you should want one, the pros, the cons, and everything else in between. I'm gonna share my tips and tricks, but why have one review when you can have two? If you like this video, do check out the description because I'm gonna post a link to the HD9 review from Country Cow Designs and everything they have found as well because they recently got this machine too. So let's go. I'm gonna unpack this and show you everything that I get with it. Okay, so straight out of the box, we've got the knee lifter. This is an absolute game changer when you're sewing. Obviously, if you're gonna go for the HD9, then that is because you're gonna be doing lots of sewing. You're gonna wanna sew fast. Um, so, you know, you're gonna be in that realm of wanting one anyway. You've also got a cover, which that's a nice little addition that it comes with a cover for the machine where you're not using it. Uh, obviously we've got our cable and then we've got all our bits in this box. We've got some machine oil, a um, thread spool holder and then we've got some things in here. So let's open that up. So it's nice that it comes in a little box as well. My box seems to be a little bit out of sorts but there we go. I've sorted that out now. Um, so inside we've got some extra bobbins. We've got four of those. And there could be one in the machine. I'll find that out in a minute. Oh, we've got a um, hem turning foot as well. That's really neat. So yeah, that's cool that that comes as standard. I like that. We've got our net for like bigger industrial spools of thread. We've got a screw, I'm not sure what that is for. I'm sure we'll find that out. We've got an extra thread keeper, some needles. And I have no idea what that is for. So first inspection on the machine, it is a heavy machine. I struggled to lift it out of the box and get it onto the table, if I'm honest. It is nice and heavy, but I like that because it's probably gonna have less kind of bouncing around. It is all metal, which is really, really nice. Um, my machine, my Bonino over there, is a lot of plastic on the outside at least. Um, so we, if we open this up, we can see we've got access to the spool the thread so the, sorry the bobbin on the side um so i'm going to look into how to do that um but that's very similar to an industrial this is a semi-industrial machine so it's it's kind of having how i imagine because i've not had it yet but i imagine it's having the benefits of having an industrial but it's in a small scale as a bag maker i need it to go through lots of layers so this i'm hoping is going to be an absolute game changer I was really excited to get going with it. I don't know why I held off using it for a little while. I was a little bit intimidated by the fact that it's in semi-industrial, even though I have used industrial machines many times before in costume workrooms. So I'm not sure why I had that worry there. But once I got stuck right in, it was totally fine. Okay, so here's the little things, the nuances that I found, the pros and the cons. So let's go through the cons first. One thing that I was really surprised at is that the bobbins are really quite expensive. It's a bit of a, a pro here as well because the bobbins are really big. You can get a lot of use out of these. You can see they're made of metal. They're not going to um, you know, break like the plastic ones, but it's worth bearing in mind that these are around five pounds each. That was a bit of a shock when I needed to get some more, but they do come with five as standard with your machine. Yeah, another con, maybe a con, maybe a pro, is that it's only straight stitch. So if you're looking for a machine that can do everything and not just bag making or not just super speedy, then you may want to look at having another machine if you don't have one already that can do buttonholes, zigzag stitch, that kind of thing. If you are looking for a general all-rounder, this is not the machine for you. But if you're looking for a bag making machine, let me tell you, this is pretty amazing. Okay, back to the cons. Now I have found as a YouTuber and doing video tutorials that the light on the machine can flicker a little. And I've seen this mentioned by other YouTubers or video creators as well. 
that can be a little bit annoying but it's not enough for me to not get this machine something that i wanted about this machine was that it has a thread cutter and that is an amazing game changer when you're doing batch sewing or just wanting to sew quickly however it's worth noting that with a thicker thread as it mentions in the manual you should not use the thread cutter which is a little bit annoying because that was one of my pros for this machine okay so while this machine does come with a hem foot a hemming foot which i think is pretty amazing that it comes as standard it doesn't come with a walking foot and if you've followed me for a while you will know that i absolutely love a walking foot on the machine it is an absolute game changer okay another con to this machine is that the thread cutter can be really loud and this was a bit of a surprise lots of people i've seen mention it as well but it's easy to get used to now since getting this machine i have been to a few different craft shows and sewing shows and I was excited to see Janome there and other kind of stockists of Janome, but generally they don't seem to bring the HD9 accessories and needles with them to the shows. So it's worth bearing in mind that it's not as easy to get the accessories for the HD9 as it is for the other range of Janome machines. And I guess because one thing that you need to know is that you do need specialist needles. Because of the speed that this machine is going, they need to have a coating, they need to be harder wearing for going through those layers and at that speed. Having said that, they're not too hard to find online and I just got mine directly from Janome. Okay, so now on to the pros, okay? These are things that I really love about this machine. Now, one thing of note, which I absolutely love, and I found this when I was doing the unboxing, is the knee lift. And if you've ever used a knee lift, it's, knee, knee lift, it's really hard to go back to not having one because it's so much easier. It's kind of like a third hand. You can adjust your sewing as you go, and it is a really good pro. Something that people may be worried about with this machine is that one of the things that is sold on this machine is that about how fast it can go. And that is a definite pro. However, I don't want that to put you off if you like to go slow sometimes with bag making especially we need to go you know one step at a time to get over or do kind of little finesse details that's totally fine as well you do have the speed dial on the top here but i found you can even on the highest speed you can still control the foot nice and easily and go one stitch at a time that's not an issue now like i mentioned it doesn't come with a walking foot as standard you can get a walking foot for it i was a little bit confused about which one to get so that's still on my radar to buy instead i did get a teflon foot that's what i've got on this machine right now and i do find that to be super useful going over cork and vinyl faux leathers that kind of thing it doesn't um, seem to need a walking foot at the moment but maybe going over those thicker seams you can use a hump jumper of course but you may find it's better to have a walking foot and also if you are of course doing lots of quilting or you've got finer fabrics a walking foot may be useful there so that is something that is on my list to get but I haven't used it yet so I can't comment too much on that one something that I really like about this machine is that although it's really heavy it is really super sturdy so this machine is not going to jump around your, ta your table some machines that are lighter or a little like a lot less expensive are going to jump around your table you're going to find it hard especially if you don't have a sturdy table as well although this machine is really heavy it's super sturdy and you're not going to find that also on that note because it is really heavy it does kind of stick to your table which is good but if you want to be able to move it around i've just made a really simple little sewing machine mat um, that I can just move the sewing machine around then and it doesn't matter about the weight. So that may be something to note if you use your table for everything, for your cutting and everything, you may just get a little sewing machine mat or make one really simple. And then you can just push your machine out the way and bring it forward when you need to. Just bear in mind, if you're using the knee lift, you will have to take the knee lift off to push your machine backwards and forwards. Now, obviously this being a semi-industrial, it has got almost the same amount of power as an industrial, but of course you don't have the cost of an industrial and you don't need the space of an industrial 
and it will go through lots and lots of layers. As you can see here on this little video, I gave it a bit of a test to see how many layers I could get it through. So it's really cool for bag making especially, which is why we're always talking about bag making for it because it can go through those thicker fabrics and those thicker layers. Something else which is really cool on this machine, which you don't get on many domestics, if any, is that it has a separate motor for winding the bobbin at the top. So you can be sewing at the same time as winding your next bobbin. So that's great if you're doing a lot of sewing or you know you're going onto a different color and you just wanna do it at the same time. It's not gonna interfere with your sewing. You don't have to unthread, wait for the bobbin, all of that stuff. So that is a definite pro. As mentioned earlier, I wasn't sure what this little tool is, but on closer inspection of the manual and everything, it is actually a cloth guide, which is super helpful, especially because it's quite thick. So you're gonna be able to get your thicker pieces in there, especially for bag making. What you do is you use that little screw that I also didn't know what that was for, and you just place it in, there's two little screw holes. You just secure it into the bed of the machine, and that gives you a nice guide to go up against when you're sewing. You could even do it at an angle if you're needing to do lots of angles. And you can obviously push it backwards and forwards to get that really good guide. Now, something else that can be seen as a pro, I haven't found it to be too much difference other than finding the foot under the machine, under the table, that's easy to get to, is that it is a larger foot pedal. So if you're looking for a machine with that, this one's got that too. So other things that I have found when using this machine, when you're putting the bobbin in, it can take a little bit of getting used to, but it's not too tricky once you get the hang of it. And it's very similar to an industrial if you've ever used an industrial. I love that there are diagrams on the machine that are easy to follow, and you just need to change over how you thread the machine for both thick and then regular thread. And it shows you that right on the machine, you don't have to go back to your manual. Okay, so something I wanted to point out, when you're threading this machine, you can either use Use like a big cone like I've got here I'll pop a link to where I got this thread from in the description as well and if you're using a cone then that's totally fine you can thread it up and through this looper up here and then down you can follow see how it's got the description here exactly how to thread it you're gonna go down and you're gonna go round through those loopers and that is for your thicker thread like you can see there if you're using your thinner thread you're gonna thread it as it shows in that bottom diagram however this is a cross round thread okay it's wound around the cone in a cross motion if you are using a straight wound thread like this one then you're going to want to thread your machine slightly differently you're going to put it onto your spool holder like so and then you're going to use this guide through here quite tricky to do one-handed and you're going to thread it through like that because it needs to come off the thread at a um, sort of left angle, whereas if it's cross wound, it needs to come off and up off of the cone. Okay, so that's something to think about. The other thing that I learned about this machine is that these bobbins have the number on the bottom and there are actually two versions of the HD9. There is the version type one and type two, I think. It, they call it, but they're both called HD9, just to be really confusing. I guess they made some adjust adjustments and relaunched it. But the Type 2, which is the newest version, has got the numbers on the bottom of the bobbin. So that's worth noting when you're looking at bobbins to buy. Of course, there are loads of different ones which are not HD9 and Janome. So that's worth noting when you're purchasing extra bobbins. And the number needs to go closest to the machine when it goes on the bobbin winder. You're also going to use the hole to put your thread through, sorry, through the top hole. So you're going to wind it on through, push it through that hole like so, and then you're going to put it on the bobbin winder. Normally with a domestic or often when you push the stopper across, it will start winding but on this machine you have got a button just below so the button is here for the bobbin winder so i'm just going to press that and wind hold my thread up and that's going to wind start the 
winding process and then with a normal thread it will just snap off with your thicker thread it's not going to do that now i have just seen it's my thicker thread is getting attached so just pull that off and then you can stop it when you're ready so when i was editing this video i realized that i had forgot to tell you about this netting that comes with the machine this is really useful for putting over your larger spools and it stops the thread from unraveling too much when it's going through into the machine. Also get that little cone holder, which is super useful for the bigger cones as well. Something else that I wanted to mention as well is that this is the standard foot that the machine comes with. Now, obviously this is a lot thinner than a regular domestic machine foot, but if you want to get really close to those zippers or just really close to those seams where you would normally use a zipper foot, you're gonna to want to invest in a zipper foot. And this is the one that I have just bought. This is the Janome HD9 version. And obviously it looks quite different to a regular zipper foot, but it's really cool because it gets really close to your work. So whether that be like a say, a seam or the zipper itself, and you just unscrew the standard foot, pop it on the side there, and then there's this screw at the back that you can adjust it whether you want it to be on the left or the right of your work. And you obviously just make sure it's clear of the needle when you secure that in place, like so. So it's really clear of the work and you can get really close to the work with this foot. So I do recommend this if you're going to be doing a lot of regular dressmaking or you just want to get close to those seams and those zippers. I have been using a Tex 45 thread and a Tex 35 thread, totally fine. These are both bonded polyester. I haven't needed to change the tension for either of those. I've just re-threaded it to the thicker thread setting. You may find that you need to go up a needle as well. Usually thicker thread, you go up a thicker needle. If you're interested in finding out more about sewing machine needles, I do have a video on that. I will pop a link in the description for that. I have heard that some people have had tension issues with this machine. It is worth noting it is not a domestic machine. Domestic machines, usually you can thread them and leave them and they'll be great for majority of your sewing. You don't really need to change the tension too much. So just bear in mind, this is not like that. You may need to adjust the tension. I haven't found I've needed to too much because I'm sewing similar fabrics and using the similar thread. So it's not too much, but it's worth bearing in mind if you do have tension issues. Also, you do have the presser foot adjuster. So if you need to lift the presser foot up a bit higher because of the thickness of the, of the fabrics, you can do that really nice and easily with this guide on the front of the machine. Okay, so after all those pros and cons, what is the verdict on this machine? I have to say I am absolutely loving this machine. So whether you are looking for a machine that just does straight stitch, but really, really well, can go really fast, doing, maybe you're doing a lot of batch sewing, you don't really need to do zigzag that much, and or you're a bag maker, this is the machine for you. It will cut through those layers like butter. It's almost an industrial, but without the needed space. So it's a fantastic bag making machine. I cannot recommend it enough. Okay, so there's the HD9. If you're interested in getting one of these machines, do check out the link in the description if you're in the UK for the supplier that I got this machine from who are very knowledgeable and super helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. On the screen right now, you can find my video that is all about different sewing machine needles. I think you're gonna find it really useful. Until the next time, happy sewing.